learning tools and ethics. So welcome again to Ethics Week 2023. Um, if this is the first presentation that you've seen today, thank you for coming to ours. Uh, but you know, every every presentation today that I've been uh, that I've seen so far today has been pretty good. So I'm hoping you all are getting some good information. Um, my name is Maurice Eccles. I'm an attorney advisor for the Board of Ethics and Government Accountability. And with me today is my colleague, Marissa Jones. She's also an attorney advisor for Vega. And then we also have Delaney uh, Marsco and Danielle Caputo. I hope I'm not messing that up uh, with the Campaign Legal Center, who would also be uh, talking about, you know, how their organization uh, plays a role in, in, in government ethics and, and uh, some feedback that they that they have for us. Okay. Let's see here. Get my mouse back in the right place. Here we go. So a little bit about Vega, uh, if you haven't heard it already. This is an office within the uh, OGE, Office of Government. Uh, Office of Government Ethics is an office within the Board of Ethics and Government Accountability, and we have investigate allegations of ethical misconduct uh, concerning district government employees and officials. Um, within that, we also provide advice and then, of course, trainings to help D.C. government employees and officials stay in line with the code of conduct um, or stay in compliance, I should say. Uh, so we have authority over district government's uh, workforce of approximately 34,000 34, employees, uh, and this include oversights over the mayor and the council. And through the, its director, the office serves the district's ethics, uh, serves as the district ethics prosecutor and is empowered to bring enforcement proceedings before the five member board of ethics and government accountability. Uh, And forgive me, I have multiple screens up and it's hard to find the mouse sometimes. So I'll let CLC talk a little bit about their organization. Thanks so much. And uh, thank you all for having us. We love Ethics Week. We love Vega. So we're always grateful to be invited um, to present at Ethics Week. Um, as you already heard, we're from the Campaign Legal Center. Uh, Danielle and I work on the ethics team at CLC, uh, but CLC does a lot of work outside of ethics. Um, we are primarily a nonpartisan um, nonprofit that works on campaign finance, government ethics, voting rights, and redistricting. We work at all levels of government. Um, we work as a watchdog and as policy reform advocates. Um, just hoping to make the government a little bit more ethical, a little bit more transparent, um, a little bit more accountable to the people. Um, and that's what we do at CLC. We work on the ethics team and um, you can go to the next slide, I think. Uh, and so uh, a, a big part of what we do is helping state and local ethics commissions uh, increase their accountability, uh, make sure that they are being as transparent as possible, and also make sure that they know what other ethics commissions across the country are doing. It can be really hard and feel really siloed um, when you're just working in your own jurisdiction. You're just kind of trying to work on your mission every day, but you might not know what the best practices are. Um, so CLC really uh, helps to act as um, a, a kind of way to bring these different practices together, these different ethics commissions together, and put out information that helps ethics commissions be the best that they can be and uh, look to their peers across the country to see uh, what they can improve. So, um, as Lainey said, we um, have been looking to see how other ethics commissions can improve and some of the really best practices that ethics commissions around the country have been using. Um, and so every year, uh, starting about three years ago, we decided that we were going to uh, write a top 10 report to talk about what ethics commissions are doing really well. Um, so the first year we focused on 
transparency upgrades. Um, last year, we looked at enforcement upgrades. And this year, our report is going to be focusing on training upgrades. And our report will be released towards the end of November. So this is a, a bit of a sneak peek um, as to what it will be including. But um, our training up or the training upgrades that um, we've seen, particularly like Vega's learning management system, um, allow ethics commissions to optimize training practices um, with varying levels of cost burden and legislative buy-in. Um, oh yeah, I guess. Uh, so you can see a little bit um, as we go through what some of our um, upgrades are. Um, in our report this year, we highlight, as I mentioned, Vega and the learning management system, which is um, obviously what you will be learning more about today. Um, but we also highlight nine other training upgrades, which you will see on the slide. Um, they range from allowing those who commit minor violations of ethics laws to receive training rather than monetary policies, uh, which is training in lieu of penalties, um, to expediting advice so that officials who want to receive ethics guidance and need to receive it more quickly um, than you know, a long turnaround um, so that it remains relevant to them, they can receive the response more quickly. And, you know, the report will come out at the end of November. Um, but one thing that we've seen that Vega's done is, you know, they have reached out to us um, after we put out our reports and say, like, we want to implement some of these practices in um, our, you know, in, in, the, in the work that we do. Um, and that's really like why we put these together. So if you are seeing something here that you want to see the Ethics Commission implement, you know, the, the report is designed to be accessible to everybody. And so hopefully we can get a conversation started about, um, you know, what training practices make sense for Bega and make sense for the population that um, you guys are training. Um, and so talking more specifically about learning management systems, learning management software, um, and I think we can go to the next slide. Um, but you know, talking about learning management systems and like yeah. what what that actually is, um, it's really just a platform that allows uh, people to access training at a pace that makes sense for them um, as often as um, they they need. And it really just allows for customizable training. So maybe different positions would need different types of training. Um, different levels of government might need different, more specific types of training. And it allows the Ethics Commission to really be dynamic in what they're um, offering to the people who need the training. Um, I know that these types of systems have been out there. I mean, I, I worked in the corporate world a lifetime ago. And we had a learning management system for like internal policies. Um, and you'll see these for like workplace harassment, workplace, um, that kind of uh, like workplace specific policies, but it really has not taken hold in the kind of ethics training community as much. And so it's really valuable that everybody who is trained by Vega has access to this type of of learning and this type of training because it's really not the norm what a lot of times people do is they have to do in-person trainings they have to go to different agencies sit down do an hour seminar people get bored people does off um and i find a lot of value in in-person training like i like going to in-person trainings i'm an ethics lawyer so you know i understand that that's not really what like everybody likes to do so these these um, types of trainings really give an opportunity to just access more people more often and make the training engaging and fun. Um, so I can turn it back over to to the Vega folks to talk about uh, their um, LMS. Um, yeah, uh, as for our LMS system, one of the key components that we we really like is the fact that we can make sure that we have comprehensive trainings. Uh, most agencies have really complex ethical guidelines, and so having an LMS system allows us to keep trainings in a centralized place um, for a vast majority of, of issues. For example, if you're an ANC commissioner, uh, the training that you're going to need is going to be different than if you're a lobbyist. Um, so that's one of the biggest pluses that we see um, and, and we utilize is the ability to make sure that our training is comprehensive 
obviously accessibility and convenience. Um, a lot of people don't have time to travel. They don't have time to um, leave their agencies to physically go somewhere else. And even with the ability to do online training, sometimes you get caught up in the middle of stuff. You can pause it, come back to it. And for different types of learners, some people need breaks in between. Some people are audio learners. Some people are visual. Um, so despite you know the way that you learn, um, it, it, it can cover all different types of learning um, capabilities. The other is consistency and standardization. We do want to make sure that every agency, every employee has the same um, consistent uh, understanding of what the rules are, what our practices are. Um, as far as interactive learning, we also see a lot of value in that. A lot of times with in-person trainings, people sometimes are a little bit nervous to participate. To participate. Um, this allows everybody to participate and your understanding remains with you so you can take quizzes over and over again if you need to. Um, it also allows us to track and monitor progress. Um, one of the really cool things is, and, and hopefully no one has to experience this, but if you do violate an ethics rule, um, we a lot of times can direct the person that may be in violation or um, potentially be in violation and say, hey, you know, make sure you take these trainings. Uh, this is your warning. We can track that confidentially and under, you know, know for sure that they understand what the rules are and, and we can keep track of that. Um, the other thing is cost effectiveness. Um, a lot of doing a lot of in person trainings costs, even if we're not having to rent the space, it may cost in man hours to have someone to pitch the space, uh, usher people in, so on and so forth. So we save a lot of money um, in, in doing and in utilizing our LMS system, which allows the attorneys to then go to other trainings so that we can make the LMS system even more comprehensive. Um, and the last thing is that it really is helpful in um, adaptability. So obviously there's a lot of government regulations that are changing quickly. And so having an LMS system, instead of us having to contact every single agency to say, okay, we need to update this rule, update this, we can immediately update our system, send out a blast email and say, hey, this rule changed. We need all of our ethics counselors to take this training and they're immediately up to speed. And prior to LMS uh, system, that's kind of difficult to do. Um, so I'll turn it over to Maurice for the next section. So yeah, I dropped a question in the chat and I got a few answers. I was asking uh, everyone if they've ever visited Vegas website for information or other resources and were they able to locate it? You know, being able to locate it is important. And so I got a few A's. So everybody has been to the site that answered and they were able to locate the information that they needed. So that's good. Um, and segue into that topic. Uh, if you haven't visited our site within the last year or so, uh, you would notice a change. Uh, we did update the site not too long ago. And uh, this is what the new front page looks like. And so, uh, uh, just to let you know, yeah, Vegas spent, you know, uh, a considerable amount of time, you know, trying to make the new site easier uh, to navigate, you know, look uh, uh, a little better and more organized and, uh, and, and just be more helpful in, in, in bringing you to the information that you need. And so, uh, of course, this page is one of the first pages you'll see when you're trying to reach. Our, uh, our virtual learning or our learning management system. Um, let's see here. I do have another question that I'll drop in. Just to get your feedback. No, nope, that's not the question I want. Let me back that one out. So it hasn't been too long since the site design was updated. Have you had a chance yet to visit it? Those are the feedback answers. I wanted to get everybody. 
And I'll just say, you know, we when we put out our first report on transparency upgrades for ethics commissions, one of the things that we included was updating uh, your website. Um, it seems like a simple thing. It's not always simple. And it's one of those things that can really make a huge difference with like transparency and accountability and just feeling like uh, people can actually access the information that, you know, the ethics commissions work really hard to compile and, and put out there. And so even though it might seem like a small thing, it's actually huge for transparency and Vega really did do a great job making it more user friendly and accessible and the feedback seems to be that, uh, you know, people agree. So it's great. All right. And so let's see here if I can get my eyes together. So you see on this main screen right here in the middle. See here. Do you, I don't know if you all see my mouse, but that purple block there, that's training and education. So you'll click on that. And then, of course, that'll bring you here, training and education. And then you'll see some of the materials that we would have online. You can register for trainings. Uh, none of you will probably be situated with lobbying trainings, but I do a quarterly lobbying training. And people can register for the different trainings on that. I don't know if it's here. Uh, we have a, another link for lobbying. But anyways, there's a monthly uh, ethics training, uh, a monthly brown paper bag. Um, we do trainings often. And so you can register for, you know, our trainings there and register for trainings. Uh, we have different training materials that are posted. You can request training. And then also we got ethics week, which we're here right now. And then what we're talking about today is the self-directed training, which will bring you to our, our learning management system. Go ahead and bring these words up. All right, so these are some of the things that we can do with our, our, our digital education content. So you, of course, like I just said before, you can register for training, review materials, request training, and then attend the self-directed trainings. And that's through the, the um, self-directed is basically the learning management system. All right, so once you click on that learning management system, self-directed trainings, it brings you here. And then this, of course, is our, our, our learning management system, which is the topic here today, the far, far left. And once you click there, it'll basically bring you to our, our, our learning management system. Now, I believe the CLC had some specific feedback for DC's uh, uh, learning management system. Did you mention that already? I may have missed. It. No, we don't have any specific feedback on DCs. Um, we feature you guys in our in our report as a good example of a learning management system. Um, I don't think we've Danielle. I don't think we've walked through uh, the whole the whole training, but um, yeah, no. Well, wasn't it like something that was distinguished between DC and the other jurisdictions or something like that with the learning management system? Yeah, I mean, we, we highlighted um, DC and the city of Atlanta um, specifically for their learning management systems um, in that they're, first of all, you have them, which is something that a lot of uh, ethics commissions do not. And um, from, you know, the, the shots that we've seen of it, we, we haven't gone through and done an entire training. Um, you know, it, it's a good system that's, you know, easy to understand and gives people some opportunity to um, go through and learn at their own speed and, and things of that nature. So, um, yes, we will be highlighting you all in, in late November. Um, you will have like a feature in our report. So now, once you reach the learning management system, uh, you can see some of the various topics that we have up, and this is just just one page. So this is a, a, a group of classes uh, situated with ANC ethics training, board of commissions training, council code training, 
uh, negotiating employment and post-employment. So these are the various topics within this catalog which, in which you can seek training. Um, and then this is another splash of, of what it looks like once you enter into one of the catalogs. And uh, if you click on one of these, then you'll get uh, a course of an overview of the subject, uh, a little video. Some of them are entertaining. Some of them are funny. Some of them are insightful. And uh, they give you, you know, pretty good insight on the topic at hand. And then it'll take you through um, interactive trainings. Um, it'll, you know, ask questions. It'll bring up points, give you a chance to think and actually, you know, interact and, and master or at least uh, understand the material. Then this is a model overview. And so quick technology issue. I wanted to have a video embedded in here to give you all a live example of the training system, but I wasn't able to do that. So I am going to pause the presentation here and share my screen and give you all just a quick snippet of, uh, of what it's like to start an interactive training if you hadn't done so already. And uh, we'll see if I can quickly find the video that I liked or thought was insightful. But yeah, this is the page that you'll get to. You can register, you use your username and password, you create an account, and once you're in there, you become a registered user, and then you can access you know, all of the trainings here. If you wanna get directly to the site, then this is a link that you can go to. It's basically right here, but um, you can find it on the website, uh, navigating those buttons that I pointed to earlier. So just give me one moment while I stop. All right, what do you all see? I just hit the share button. Yes, please type your URL address. Okay. So it just disappeared my URL address because I had it. Stop it again and get it back up. Let me exit that one. All right, let's try one more time. How about now? Good. You see your login page. Right. Take you to the catalog. Move my attendees out of the way so I can see. Which one was it? Framework, framework, role, that's fine, that's decision making. I think it was this one. Maybe it wasn't, but we'll just click on it and just see if you like it. <laughs> Are you still seeing a video come up? It's probably or loading? Yep. Yeah. And you see the vignette, like the picture's changing? Mm -hmm. All right, great. Do you hear the video? I'm gonna pause it. 
So there's a video playing. Can you hear that? I know sometimes if I play a video on a screen, sometimes it's not able to be heard. Could you hear hear any sound from that? All right, let's see if we can fix that. These screens got to go down. Well, I will say while you're doing that, I think this circles back to the importance of the LMS system because when we do the trainings with the LMS, we don't have to worry about our videos not working, um, size being too loud to fit into the PowerPoint, so on and so forth. So it is, this is a, a, a live example of why it's beneficial to have an LMS system. It's also, you know, in the in the work that we did talking to ethics commissions about, um, you know, their training programs, we see that people who use either LMS systems or even some sort of electronic on demand type training, they do see increases in compliance. Um, you know, people are more engaged with the learning. And so it's not just beneficial for, you know, the ethics commissions who are trying to find more efficient ways to train a vast workforce. It's also really beneficial to the workforce, you know, to the people who are, who are grappling with ethics issues every day because they, they've actually learned and engaged with the material and they are, they're complying more. So um, we just have seen that there are benefits to this type of program across the board and that, um, even though it can be costly to implement, it is really, really worth the, the cost. I am going to go back to sharing the PowerPoint because that sound thing is going to hold us up. <laughs> All right. All right, do you see the slide back up? Is that when everyone sees? All right, let me bring my other windows back. So they all disappear. And my chat box go back. All right, I really, really wanted to show you all that video because I feel like they're entertaining. And, uh, and uh, but yeah, there's just technology issues and, all, and I'm not a WebEx expert uh, to be able to embed those videos and, and, get the, and get that sound going for you all. But um, the videos are, if you just want to take my word for it, they're uh, very insightful. Um, they are presented in a way that makes you think about the issue because the theme of this week is like what always ethics or or everyday ethics and um just thinking about how you know your everyday decisions can um you know uh, impact you know ethics rules um or even compromise you you know in the ethics sense and then a lot of times people um um it's not necessarily a mix because they're kind of one and the same but, uh, you know, kind of commingle uh, the thoughts of ethics and morale and uh, some of the videos, you know, not necessarily touching on a specific ethics rule, but just touching on, you know, good morality. Uh, there's uh, uh, one video uh, that intros with the guy who is uh, leaving his home. And I think he's, if I can remember correctly, he's either walking his dog or going on his morning job, but he has blinders on. And so he's just focused on whatever he's doing around him, but he's just blind to, you know, all the other issues that other people or things that are, you know, just going on, you know, in his close proximity because he just can't see it. And so um, everybody, or I think, no, it's just him that has those blinders on. And um, 
you know, he's just stepping on toes, rubbing people the wrong way. And he's just not cognizant of how his decisions, you know, impact, you know, other people. But then once he takes those blinders off, you know, he can see, you know, how his decisions and, you know, how his everyday movements, you know, play a part uh, in, in helping, you know, other people out. And so uh, the videos are entertaining in that aspect and then get you thinking, you know, along the lines of, you know, a, a more um, ethical frame of, uh, of thinking. And so another way that we get our, our, our information on training out is uh, through our, our newsletter. Um, this is posted on our website, is also disseminated to different ages, the, all of the agencies, ethics counselors. And uh, this is, you know, one of the pages uh, we, we talk about, you know, our, our latest activities, um, latest opinions that have been released and just, you know, notable ethical issues that are that are happening locally and around the country. And then also within our upcoming events, we let people know about, you know, the, the different trainings that could be coming up. This is an old one from 2022, but you can see, you know, updated versions for 2023 where we, you know, list our, our, our different trainings and um, try to, you know, use this along with the learning management system to just basically expand our outreach and, and spreading education concerning ethics. Because we don't want to be, uh, you know, a gotcha agency, you know, ethical violations, code of conduct violations, um, they can get you fined. Um, but we don't want that to be, you know, the first time you learning about, you know, ethics is when you got fined. So uh, it, it, we want to educate you, you know, uh, rest restore the public trust, you know, make, you know, the uh, uh, one of the words I'm looking for, just, you know, just make things efficient, um, get you in the right direction and it can avoid, you know, uh, uh, dilemmas. With our with our district government employee, yeah, definitely transparency and just making sure that we remind you in a casual way that ethics matters. Consistent basis is kind of the goal of the the newsletter. And then I had another poll. Question go through. Maybe not. Okay, yeah, it went through. I had a delay on my end. So I got some A's, yes. I got some C's, yes, and you should, because it would be very informative and shield you from being fine and actions that, you know, fine for actions that are aligned with the advice, right? Somebody said B, no. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, make sure you reach out. So not only do we train, not only do we have the learning management system available for you to get insight on ethical issues, you could just plain email or call us and we'll give you ethic, uh, ethics advice. So if you have, you know, a question within your district employment or, you know, you feel, you know, something may be an issue or you just want insight on, you know, how this, you know, interplays with the code of conduct, we can give you advice on that situation. If you are, you know, thinking of part-time employment or, you know, secondary employment and are wondering if that job might conflict with your uh, district government employment. We can advise you on uh, what you can and cannot do within that outside employment regarding, you know, your, your dis district employment and avoid, you know, some, some code of conduct, you know, pitfalls that could be faced 
when um, conducting outside businesses that that especially interface with DC government. And as long as you make a good faith effort to abide by the advice that we provide, you, you do have a safe harbor with that. Meaning that if you um, you do happen to make an honest uh, mistake in your compliance, you you won't get fined, be, right? No, and then also, yeah, we'll uh, you know, maybe we advised you to do something or said that something was okay, but then you know, just looking into it a little further or another issue coming up. We can, you know, circle back around and say, hey, you know, um, you know, that does turn out to be a violation, you know, stop doing that. And then because we told you that you could do it, if a complaint comes from, you know, that situation, you know, you wouldn't be fine for it because we gave you safe harbor advice that would shield you, you know, from from um, from a future fine if you if you stayed in line with that advice, that initial advice. And then do we have any questions that you would like to share? You can share them in the chat or let's see here. Do I know how to unmute people? All right, so I can't unmute attendees. <laughs> so if anyone has a question, you can go ahead and ask them in the chat. Let's see here. All right, so FOIA is not my expertise. That is with the Office of Open Government. They can give you all uh, uh, great advice on, on government transparency issues and, and FOIA. But um, reach out to us by email and we'll get you to the right person that'll answer that question. Um, I have a question. Um, how do, um, how should they reach out if they have a question about something they encounter in a learning management system video? Is there a specific way to reach out or just the normal channels? Yeah, the normal channels. Uh, if you see something in a video uh, that you want clarification on, hey, I seen this in a video, I'm confused. Same type of advice. Uh, you can ask us about it. We're clarified on the spot. So you don't have to actually have, you know, any type of issue burning before you that you need advice on. If you just are interested in the topic and, uh, you know, we, we try not to give hypothetical advice, but if you just need clarification for your understanding, yes, feel free uh, uh, to reach out and we'll give you, you know, advice concerning you know, any clarification you might need within the learning management system. All right. So I have a couple questions to say. Oh, so um, we'll have to log this. So yeah, so we people with k12.dc.gov emails are having trouble creating a profile. So that might this an adjustment we need to make in the system. Now, now I don't have an answer to your second question. The reason why annual ethics training is not required for all DC government employees or only FES powers. Um, it is somewhat required for all DC government employees. We, when you come on onboarding and orientation, there is an overview of ethics. Um, that is something that we're working toward. Um, um, just making sure that we, you know, have the outreach that there that know that people know that we are around, and um, and we can get those trainings, and then they can seek us for trainings as well. And ideally, ethics counselors for each agency would be the ones to help facilitate that to make sure um, that uh, employees of that agency have the proper training. I know at some agencies, the general counsel's offices do that, um, but we do plan on um, having a little bit more dialogue back and forth with uh, ethics counselors to make sure that we do the more regularly, regularly scheduled trainings at each agency. I do. I have heard that discussion. And so we are at 
the end of this training. And I really, really wish I was able to uh, play one of those videos for you all. That would have been nice to see. So I would like for everyone on here, uh, the attendees, to maybe promise me something. Go visit our, our LMS uh, system. I, I showed you how to get to it. You don't have any excuses. Um, you know, at the end of the day or during the day or during your lunchtime, you have some downtime or could work at the same time. Visit the site. Um, register with the system if you haven't already. And, uh, and take one of our trainings. Um, Another uh, piece of information, me and a few other attorneys within the office actually provided some of the voices in the training. So you'll hear us, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, commentating and, and bringing you, you know, through the training as well. And, uh, and that wasn't easy to do. Uh, we had to get some specialized equipment to make sure that our voices were clear. Uh, I personally had to wait till everyone in my house was asleep, so I was in the middle of the night uh, 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 making sure that you can hear me and not hear uh, people screaming in the background. And so, uh, you know, it was an effort that, uh, you know, that was made and, uh, and, I, and I hope you all get a lot out of it, a lot out of it and um, it can get some insight. All right. All right, and that is it for today. And I will let you all go and you can have a rest of the great evening and enjoy some traffic if you have to get into it. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks all. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Delaney and Danielle for, for joining yes, us today. Thank I you appreciate all. your time. Of course, always happy to be included. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>